There's a sobering new study about the long-term effects of alcohol. Having just one drink a day could impact your brain. If alcohol has about the same cancer-causing potential as one to two cigarettes. So that when you stop, your brain's not really ready for that. Alcohol changes the relationship between what's called the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and the adrenals. Alcohol consumption has been a part of human culture for centuries. While minimal drinking, such as a glass of wine on one day of the week, can have some potential health benefits, excessive alcohol consumption can lead to severe health issues, as you might already know, from liver damage and cardiovascular issues to impaired cognitive function and sexual dysfunction. Alcohol's impact can be far reaching and intense. In fact, according to the World Health Organization, alcohol is responsible for approximately 3 million deaths every year year or about 5.3% of all global debts. This means that alcohol consumption is a major contributing factor to the global burden of disease and injury and is associated with numerous health, social and economic problems. Hey friends, my name is Dr. Noble Nasu. I'm a medical doctor with an interest in lifestyle medicine and on this channel I discuss various evidence-based natural ways to live a healthier life and I'm also a coach to people looking to become the best versions of themselves physically or mentally. Now I'm more than ever, it is so crucial to denoise the flow of information that is being hurled at us at every minute. So feel free to get in touch with me if you want some guidance about your health or even something you want to discuss about your career. Okay, let's get back to our topic for the day. We are going to go on a deep dive into the science behind alcohol's effects, exploring how it interacts with various organ systems and why moderation, if not complete avoidance, is crucial for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So grab a drink non-alcoholic, sit back and let's uncover the truth about alcohol and your health. Let's start with the master organ, the brain. Alcohol can have both immediate and long-term effects on the brain. It impairs our cognitive function, memory and decision-making abilities. According to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, excessive drinking can lead to a condition called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, causing memory problems and difficulty with coordination. Let us explore the complex world of neurotransmitters and receptors to understand what alcohol does to our brain. Alcohol impacts several neurotransmitter systems, including glutamate, gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA, dopamine, and serotonin, which control our brain activity, mood, and behavior. Glutamate makes our brain more active, while GABA slows it down. Alcohol reduces glutamate's activity and increases GABA's, so the net effect is that which slows down our brain. This leads to feeling relaxed or sleepy, but also causes poor coordination and and slower reaction times. Alcohol also affects our brain's reward system by increasing dopamine, which makes us feel good. One subconsciously chases that good feeling one might have experienced in the initial session, and over time, your brain wants higher doses of the same substance to get the same good feeling. This can lead to addiction, making most people crave the pleasurable feelings alcohol provides. Serotonin, another neurotransmitter, is involved in mood, sleep, and appetite. Alcohol disrupts serotonin levels which can cause mood swings and emotional problems in heavy drinkers. On a cellular level, alcohol consumption leads to oxidative stress and neuroinflammation, which can cause cell damage and death. Alcohol metabolism produces a reactive oxygen species, which can damage cellular components such as proteins, fats, and DNA. Additionally, alcohol activates the brain's immune cells called microglia, leading to the release of pro-inflammatory molecules that can contribute to brain inflammation and degeneration. The next organ we are going to explore would be the stomach, which is one of the first organs to process alcohol in our body. The stomach is lined with a protective barrier called the gastric mucosa, which helps prevent damage from strong stomach acid and other irritants. Alcohol can disrupt the integrity of this barrier by increasing the production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, and reducing the levels of protective prostaglandins. This can lead to inflammation, erosion, and even ulceration of the gastric mucosa, increasing the risk of gastritis and peptic ulcers. Alcohol can also affect stomach acid production, leading to an imbalance in the gastric environment. It stimulates 
the release of gastrin, a hormone that promotes the secretion of hydrochloric acid by parietal cells in the stomach lining. Excessive acid production can cause irritation and inflammation of the stomach lining, contributing to acid reflux and the development of gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. Alcohol can also impair gastric motility, which is the coordinated movement of the stomach muscles that propels food through the digestive tract. Alcohol can disrupt the normal rhythmic contractions of the stomach slowing down gastric emptying and prolonging the time food spends in the stomach. Delayed gastric emptying can further increase acid reflux symptoms and contribute to feelings of bloating and discomfort. So now you understand why you feel so uncomfortable the next day or even the same night when you're drinking. The next organ to be affected would be the liver. The liver is one resilient organ and the only one that can fully regenerate back if damaged, provided one gives it the opportunity to heal heal itself. One of the liver's functions is to metabolize alcohol, but excessive consumption can lead to liver damage. Heavy drinking can cause fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and cirrhosis. In 2018, alcohol-related liver disease accounted for 44.3% of liver disease deaths in most countries around the world. I'm sure by now that would have gone up above 50%. So how does the liver process alcohol? The liver uses a series of enzyme-driven reactions. The primary enzyme involved is alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH, which converts alcohol into acetaldehyde, a toxic and reactive compound. Acetaldehyde is then further metabolized by aldehyde dehydrogenase, ALDH, to acetate, a less harmful substance that can be converted into water and carbon dioxide. But during the alcohol metabolism, once again, reactive oxygen species are generated, causing activation of inflammatory pathways leading to cell death and the development of liver diseases such as fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and cirrhosis. Excessive consumption can lead to the accumulation of fat in the liver cells, a condition known as fatty liver or steatosis. Alcohol alters fat metabolism by increasing the synthesis of fatty acids and triglycerides while impairing the liver's ability to break down and export fats. Over time, this accumulation of fat can cause liver inflammation and cell damage, increasing the risk of developing more advanced liver diseases. Alcoholic hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver cells and then these cells get attacked by our own immune cells. This condition can progress to cirrhosis where healthy liver tissue is replaced by scar tissue, impairing liver function. Over time, the whole liver turns into a large dysfunctional chunk of scar tissue and the only solution that late into the disease would be a liver transplant and a matching liver is not something you can get very easily. If you want me to do a detailed video about alcoholic liver disease, please do let me know in the comment section and I will surely get one done for you guys. Moving on to our next organ, the pancreas. The results from this 2017 study shows that alcohol consumption is responsible for 40% of acute pancreatitis cases and 60 to 90% of chronic pancreatitis cases. The pancreas produces and secretes digestive enzymes such as amylase, lipase, and proteases, which are essential for breaking down food in the small intestine. Alcohol consumption can disrupt the secretion and activation of these enzymes. Excessive alcohol intake can cause a premature activation of these pancreatic enzymes within the pancreas itself. This leads to auto-digestion and damage to the pancreatic tissue. Yes, your pancreas starts to eat itself. When this goes on for a long period of months, it can lead to tissue damage and fibrosis or hardening of the organ by scar tissue, which can impair pancreatic function and increase the risk of developing chronic pancreatitis or long-term pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis is associated with a progressive loss of pancreatic functions, leading to improper absorption of food, digestion, diabetes mellitus, and issues with our nerves. This brings us to our next system that gets affected, the nervous system. Alcohol can lead to peripheral neuropathy, a condition where nerve cells are damaged causing numbness, tingling, and pain in your hands and feet. Alcohol can alter neuronal communication, which is the communication between nerves, by interfering with neurotransmitter systems. As we discussed earlier in the context of the brain, these effects also extend to peripheral nerves where alcohol can impair synaptic transmission and disrupt the proper functioning of nerve cells. Synapses are junctions where two or more nerves meet to exchange signals 
signals. Axonal transport is a critical process that ensures the proper movement of proteins, organelles, and other cellular components within the nerve cells. Alcohol can disrupt axonal transport by altering the expression and function of motor proteins such as kinesins and dinesins, leading to the accumulation of transport cargoes and the impairment of nerve cell function. Just like the thick covering around an electrical wire, we have an insulating layer called myelin sheet around a nerve, which is crucial for the efficient transmission of nerve impulses. Alcohol can impair the function of Schwann cells, which produce these myelin sheath, leading to the demyelination and a loss of nerve conduction speed. The combined effects of alcohol on neuronal communication, axonal transport, and myelination can lead to the development of alcohol-induced peripheral neuropathy. This condition is characterized by nerve damage, resulting in symptoms such as pain, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, and impaired coordination. Speaking of muscle weakness, how does alcohol affect our muscular system? A 2014 study found that alcohol-induced muscle damage could lead to a reduction in muscle strength and function. The formation of muscle protein is essential for maintaining muscle mass and function. Alcohol consumption can impair this process by disrupting the mTOR signaling pathway, which plays a critical role in regulating protein synthesis in response to growth factors and nutrients. This impairment can lead to reduced muscle growth and contribute to muscle atrophy. Oxidative stress can lead to the dysfunction of proteins and cellular structures contributing to muscle weakness and reduced force generation by that muscle. Alcohol can also interfere with energy metabolism in muscle cells by affecting mitochondrial function. Mitochondria are the energy producing power stations inside cells and their dysfunction can lead to reduced energy availability and impaired muscle contraction. Alcohol can alter the expression of genes involved in mitochondrial biogenesis or the formation of mitochondria and impair the function of the electron transport chain, further exacerbating oxidative stress. The combined effects of alcohol on muscle protein synthesis, oxidative stress, and energy metabolism can lead to the development of alcoholic myopathy. The hallmark symptoms of this condition include muscle weakness, atrophy or loss of muscle, and in severe cases, muscle wasting leading to disability. Moving on to our next organ and a major one, the heart. Alcohol can have harmful effects on the cardiovascular system as well. This 2017 study shows that excessive alcohol intake is linked to a higher risk of heart failure. Besides the effect that alcohol has on general muscle tissue, it can also directly affect muscle cells specifically in the heart called cardiomyocytes. Cardio meaning heart and myo meaning muscle. Alcohol has also been shown to interfere with calcium handling within these cells, which is crucial for proper muscle contraction and relaxation. Disruption of calcium handling can lead to impaired contractility and heart function. Once again, the combined effects of alcohol on oxidative stress, energy metabolism, and cardiac function can lead to the development of alcoholic cardiomyopathy, a condition where the heart muscles become enlarged and weakened and eventually end up in heart heart failure. Heavy drinking can cause high blood pressure and irregular heartbeat as well. Our blood pressure is regulated by another organ besides the heart, our kidneys. When we look at the kidneys, excessive alcohol consumption can lead to kidney damage and contribute to the development of kidney diseases. Alcohol alters the blood flow and pressure within the kidneys. Sudden changes in blood flow happens when there is release of substances that cause constriction or expansion of blood vessels in the kidneys, such as vasopressin, nitric oxide and angiotensin 2. This is how common blood pressure medications like lisinopril or Lasix work. These alterations can impact the kidney's ability to filter blood and maintain electrolyte balance. Because when you pee, you're not just losing water from your body. You always lose a ton of electrolytes like sodium, potassium or magnesium. Oxidative stress, just like how it affects other organs, work here as well and lead to the dysfunction of proteins contributing to kidney damage and impaired function. Over time, this can lead to diseases such as chronic kidney disease, glomerulonephritis, which is just a fancy term for an inflammation of tiny filtration tubes deep inside your kidneys that do all the filtration work. If you don't give your kidneys enough time to repair itself from the effects of alcohol, then the final stage would be kidney failure. And once that happens, you are looking at getting hooked up 
to a dialysis machine that is going to have to do the work of the kidneys from outside your body. And that increases our chances of getting more infections as our immune system also gets affected by alcohol consumption. So what happens to our immune system? Alcohol can affect the functions of various immune cells, including white blood cells or WBCs. When you get a blood test done for a routine checkup, you can see RBCs and WBCs in your report. Under the heading of WBCs, there are many subtypes of immune cells called eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, macrophages, and lymphocytes. They all serve very specific functions, but overall form the defense system of your body. Alcohol can impair the ability of these cells to recognize and eliminate pathogens or bugs, as well as reduce their capacity to get to sites of infection and inflammation. These effects can compromise the immune system's ability to fight infections and maintain proper immune surveillance. Besides weakening the internal defense systems, alcohol consumption also impair the body's response to infections by weakening the effectiveness of physical barriers such as skin and mucosal surfaces that prevent nasty bugs from entering our bodies because of which individuals who consume excessive amounts of alcohol may be at a higher risk of developing bacterial and viral infections such as pneumonia and hepatitis. Alcohol dehydrates our system and this can be seen very easily on our skin. So then what system is left to get affected by alcohol? Well, our reproductive system. Alcohol can interfere with the hormonal regulation of the reproductive system by affecting the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis or the HPG axis. This axis is responsible for producing and regulating reproductive hormones such as gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH, luteinizing hormone or LH, follicle stimulating hormone FSH, estrogen and testosterone. Alcohol-induced disruption of the HPG axis can lead to hormonal imbalances that affect fertility and sexual function in both men and women. At some point during my medical school years, I've heard that alcohol increases desire but decreases performance in bed. I must say from personal experience, this is true, but let's not go by that. Have a look at this research paper which shows that alcohol can contribute to erectile dysfunction by impairing blood flow and nerve function in the penis. And this paper shows how alcohol can cause vaginal dryness, decreased libido, and impaired sexual arousal in women. Besides the performance issues, in men, alcohol can reduce sperm count, motility, or the movement of sperms, and morphology, leading to decreased fertility. You just end up shooting blanks. In women, excessive alcohol intake can affect the quality of the egg, its maturation, and ovulation, which also negatively affects female fertility. We are not even considering the effects alcohol has on a developing baby in the womb, which would be a topic for a whole separate video. Just remember that alcohol can have numerous harmful effects on the human body, ranging from cognitive impairment of your brain to organ damage, be it your kidney, your stomach, your liver. But by being aware of these risks, we can make informed decisions about our alcohol consumption and take steps to reduce the harm it can cause. Remember, moderation is key and if you or someone you know is struggling with alcohol abuse, don't hesitate to seek help. A key point to always ask yourself is who is in control? Is that drink, cigarette, vape or anything else controlling you or are you in control? The realization of that fundamental power struggle, it's a first step in getting over your addictions. I know it's not easy. Your body might be hardwired to function only if you put that substance into your system now, but you are stronger than that. It is your life and you get one chance to live it the way you want. So choose wisely. Treat your body as your temple. Feel free to get in touch with any struggle you might be going through and I'm here to help. Until next time, take care and I'll see you around.